Uh, McVeigh. I'm sorry, sir. That's all right. I've, I've, I've heard a thousand variations throughout my life, so. Well, I, I'm, a, I'm a Captain Weber. Okay. It's been pronounced Weber for a long time. Uh, no, I, I, all how right. Can I, how can I help you today? Well, I'm calling about, I'm sure I'm not the only person that's called or contacted you in some way about a recent incident that happened there in your, I guess, Salisaw is a county in Oklahoma. Is that true or is it a, is it a city? Okay. Uh, well, apparently there's an incident recently with a uh, a citizen who ended up being uh, forcefully attacked by uh, one of your officers, a lieutenant. Uh, I'd say it was Oliver. Um, I, 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 okay. Well, I'm I'm just curious if there what sort of progress is being made if any in investigating uh, potential criminal actions uh, against this officer i mean it, it's clear it's clear from the video that was posted that gets a, a deputy from the county sheriff was there and the incident was recorded on the video camera and according to what i saw on the news article what one of your officers wrote in the police narrative is obviously blatantly incorrect and outright a lie based on what was shown on the video and I'm just really concerned that I've, I've dealt with my own issues of police officers uh, crafting what they want uh, the, the other police officers, the prosecutors, the judges, and the public to believe happened in the incident and has been shown to be incorrect by video. And I'm just, my issues have never been resolved, so I've taken it upon myself in the past three years to be kind of a, a police accountability activist. And when I see something that's you know yeah. egregious like that, I, I like to try and follow up and see if somebody's actually doing something. And it seems like your chief, uh, the interview that I saw in the news article, he seems fairly concerned. I mean, he's, he's a little, uh, his tone is very low. So, I mean, I don't know if that's normally the way he is, but he did seem very concerned about the incident. And I just want to make sure that something is is done about that because it's, it's kind of disturbing for, you know, for a police officer to write a narrative that's directly contradictory to what's shown on video that they weren't aware was being recorded, which is my assumption. I understand. Okay. Oh, uh, well, uh, is is there actually going to be uh, an outside investigation? Uh, that's what the chief mentioned. You know that if there's he if he believes that there needs to be an outside investigation, then some outside body will be brought in to to look into it. And has that something that's been started, or is it still being dealt with internally? Excellent. Well, I, I, that's progress as far as I'm concerned. I mean, at least if at least if you're willing to uh, welcome outside scrutiny, then that's a step in the right direction. Oh yeah, we, we actually have outside agents in this case. And, and, and how does that work in Oklahoma? So I'm in Virginia, and here in Virginia, there are there are no outside agencies that investigate police misconduct unless the police department itself invites that investigation. In other words, I can't call uh, my local Commonwealth attorney or prosecuting attorney to make a complaint because generally they will, you know, they're the chief law enforcement executive in our in our cities. Uh, you can't call the sheriff's department. You can't call the state police. You can't call the governor or the attorney general. And they just don't take citizen complaints. And unless the police department invites scrutiny itself, then it just doesn't happen. Excellent. I understand. Well, uh, 
Well, it's probably it's probably a little more difficult for somebody who had a, such a small department for anything to not uh, receive, you know, outside scrutiny. The city that I live in is about 450 officers, and we have several other surrounding municipalities that have upwards of 800 to 1,000 officers. So, you know, a lot of times things are kind of put to the side because of the number of officers and the number of incidents or, you know, police and citizen interactions. So there's, I think that's been part of the the reticence to have outside scrutiny is because there's so many people here that a lot of stuff, they have a lot of other things to deal with. And of course, police investigating themselves is not one of the top priorities. So it's a... I I understand. I I expected that. I just got to ask the questions and get the the answer. So I appreciate you calling me back. I appreciate that your police chief seemed concerned. I appreciate that you're uh, apparently willing to have somebody beside yourself look into the behavior, and uh, hopefully uh, something is brought to fruition as far as justice for. Uh, what what I believe, in my opinion, as another American citizen, was uh, a, an ex use of an excessive force and what is commonly referred to as test lying by a police officer who thought that they could cover for each other because they weren't aware that it was being documented. So I'm glad that something is being done about it. So uh, I've never had a court case. I've never heard of uh, yeah, it's uh, uh, to look it up on you know type it into Google. Uh, there's uh, quite a bit of uh, and, I'm, and I'm not trying to be a smart aleck, I just the person who heard that. Oh, well, you know, it's it's a phrase, apparently it was crafted initially from what I read by the New York Police Department, you know, of course, who has a department of up in like the 40,000 officers or something like that. And it's it's just a, a colloquialism that's been coined to cover the, you know, uh, per, perjury and, you know, and other sort of documentation fraud or, you know, false narratives, that sort of thing that police officers sometimes engage in, you know, all people behave badly, police officers, no exception. And a lot of people from the time they're children, like try and get away with things. And some people are in the position to do so. And it's one thing, you know, if you steal candy from the store, it's another when you steal somebody's liberty and putting them in jail, you know, for years and years and years. So, so anyway, uh, again, I appreciate your time. I appreciate the callback. I'm glad something's being done and I hope you guys have managed to work it out for the betterment of all of us. You too, thank you. Neither of the two Salisaw police officers involved had their body cameras rolling that night. Instead, the video you're about to see is from a county deputy who showed up to assist on the call about two weeks ago. Now, the Salisaw police chief says his department is investigating why the officers did not have their body cameras on and why one officer appeared to have placed a man in a chokehold. Get the cops off my door. Should I? No! This body camera video is from another agency who showed up to assist Salisaw police on June 7th. Stop! Shut up or you will all go. Now you listen. I was trying to talk Get out of my face, Billy. I'm running up the hat. That's Lieutenant Billy Oliver arresting a man accused of misdemeanor, disorderly conduct, and resisting arrest. Oliver was placed on paid leave today while the police department investigates what happened. Police Chief Terry Franklin says the two officers involved from his department did not have their body cameras activated, which the chief says is against policy. They pick them up at the beginning of their shift and they're supposed to uh, put them on and use them anytime they're dealing with the public and a police action. The chief says they're also reviewing how the man was arrested. We don't practice or train with a choco. But the police report may not match up with what actually happened. One officer wrote that the man came up to Lieutenant Oliver and began screaming and shoved him. The officer wrote that the lieutenant told the man to put his hands behind his back and he refused to do so. The report says the two officers had to assist the man to the ground before they could get him in handcuffs. Right now, it's officers within the Salisaw Police Department who are investigating one of their own. I feel like that it was something further than a policy violation and I'd ask to refer it to another agency to investigate to see if there might be any criminal or anything like that. And the police chief says there's no word on when the internal investigation will be complete. And today, the man who was arrested, who you saw in that video, didn't want to talk on camera just yet, but said he definitely feels like the force was excessive. And that man has not yet gone to court for the misdemeanor charges. Live in Salisaw, Brett Rains, 4029 News.